Exodus chapter 15 verse 1 to verse 2. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord saying, I will sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my soul. He has become my salvation. This is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. This song was the song that Moses and the congregation sang when they came out from the land of slavery, entering into their own promised land. You know what? All of us came out from our past. We came out from every challenge and difficulty. And it was because of God that we experience today victory after victory. And that is why we worship Him. That is why we sing a song and we exalt Him because no one else is worthy but Him alone. Let's worship God this morning. Seems like I'm surrounded me. 
was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The bridge was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm you held me in your side So made a way Across the great divide Heaven's throne To build it here inside And there at the cross You paid the debt I owe Broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I had hope Thank you Jesus for the blood applied Thank you Jesus it has washed me white Thank you Jesus you have saved my life and brought me from the dark to glorious life. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walk right out again. And now death has no sting. And life has no end For I have been transformed By the blood of the Lamb Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of life Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white Thank you, Jesus, you have saved Sunday is a reminder of what Jesus has done for you and for me. And just like what that song says, we thank God for His blood because if not for the blood, there is no forgiveness, there is no remission for our sins. And this is why before we partake of communion, it's always good to reflect and remember Jesus' sacrifice at the cross. It's also a good time to repent of our sins, to just give our lives to, to Christ. If you've done that, just recommit your life to Christ. Just begin to surrender all to Him because everything is possible because of the blood that was shed 2,000 years ago. Let's just close our eyes. Just repent before the Lord. Lord, even as a church, we repent today. Salamat, Lord, kay ang imo grasya nagapangibabaw gitsa amon. Salamat, Lord, nga ginhugasan mo ang amon sa lahat. And as far as the east is from the west, 
you remember our sins no more. Salamat gigino sa bagong nga kabuhi. Salamat sa new life in Christ. And Lord, even as we partake of this communion, we are forever grateful, Lord, for what you have done in and through us. And salamat ginoo because wala naguntat sa cross, wala naguntat, Lord, when the day you rose again. And it did not even end when the church started. Even today, Lord, you are still working in our hearts. You are still molding us. You are still providing us. You are still working out our lives for your glory and for your honor. So Lord, thank you for what you have done and all that you are going to do in and through every one of us. In Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me let us pray Lord we thank you for sending your son our Lord Jesus Christ as we partake of the bread we remember and participate in his body that was broken and sacrificed for us. Thank you for letting him take our place in receiving the judgment that we deserve because of our sin. We also recognize that all of us who partake of this bread today are one and are all part of his one body, the church. The body of Christ broken for us and the congregation reply, thanks be to God. Let's partake of the bread together. Verse 25. In the same way also he took the cup after, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Lord, kapasalamat gid kami kay ginpatubod mo ng imo nga dugo para hugasan kami, Lord, kaglimpiuhan sa amon nga mga sala. Lord, salamat gid because if not for your blood, we will still be in our sins. And we will experience your judgment. But Lord, because of your shed blood, we are healed, spirit, soul, and body. We are healed, Lord, from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Every relationship can be healed because of the blood. And Lord, today, even as we partake of your blood, napasalamat ni kami, Lord, because its power it's never, it's never gonna lose its power. It is the same yesterday, today, and for forever. So we impute and declare the blood of Jesus over our marriages, over our families, over, Lord, our businesses, over, Lord, our city, our leaders, and our nation. We declare the blood of Christ in our land and in our country, the Philippines, in Jesus' name. The body, uh, the blood of Jesus Christ shed for us. Thanks be to God. Let's partake of the cup of the Lord. For what? Whenever we eat this bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Lord, we will continue to worship You for who You are and for whatever You have done. It's not 
perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To For the last time, you are perfect. reminded of the story of the par parable of the prodigal son and I think a better title would be it's a parable of the good good father and you all know the story when the son realized his folly, realized his sin, he decided to go back to his father and from afar away it was the father who ran towards him putting a robe in his body, sandals on his feet, and a ring on his finger. And that same God is the same God today, the same God in the future. If you are here and you just run away from Him, I think it's time to come home. If you are here, you're tired, you are oppressed, you are depressed, life is difficult, life is hard, work is hard, business is challenging I think the same invitation is given today come to your good good father just close our eyes right now and Lord here are your people father God running back to you at the end of the day and Lord as they run to you thank you Lord for affirming your love for them, for all of us. Just begin to feel and experience the embrace of a loving Father to you today. And Lord, as you embrace us with your love, as you affirm us with your love, thank you for reminding us of who we are. We are no longer strangers or aliens. We are your sons and daughters. Salamat, Lord, sa among identity in Christ. Na kami bata sa ginoo. And Lord, as we are reminded of who we are, as we are affirmed by your love, Lord, remove that burden or burdens that your people and your children are carrying. We ask your Holy Spirit, Lord, to minister to every heart. Lord, ang mga kapoy ginoo, taga ay sila rest. Lord, ang mga haras, Lord, mga challenge, maybe may mga difficulty ang gina-face, maybe, maybe physical, or maybe spiritual, or maybe financial. Lord, just give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we lay it all at your feet. We surrender all of this. So that, Lord, we can embrace you instead. Lord, you promise in your word, out of this intimacy with you, rivers of living water will flow. Lord, refresh your people today with rivers of living water. Lord, allow us, Lord, to drink from the cup of that living water. Lord, para Lord, ma strengthen kami. Para Lord, makareceive kami fresh grace. Para Lord, ginuo, makapadayon kami, Lord, sa imo, purpose and calling for each and every one of us. Lord, salamat, gin Lord, out of the out of the flow of the river of living water, we can experience fullness of life today. Salamat, gin Lord. Let the river of living water flow. And Lord, we as your rivers of living water flow, I know, Father God, it, it is always accompanied by your Holy Spirit. Lord, fill your church with your Holy Spirit. Lord, salamat, giginoo, because the same Holy Spirit we receive in the book of Acts is the same Holy Spirit we have today. The Holy Spirit that strengthens us. The Holy Spirit that brings our passion back. The Holy Spirit that empowers people to be bold. The Holy Spirit that allows us to perform signs and wonders. 
and expect miracles, Lord, left and right. Lord, whatever miracles your people are believing this year, I pray, Lord, for an open heaven, Lord, of your Holy Spirit, that they will realize, Father God, that you are there. You la we lack no good thing because every spiritual blessing is found in Christ Jesus, and he loves to give good gifts to his children. Lord, let that happen today. Let that happen, Lord, this year so that, Lord, you will receive the glory and the honor. I declare, Lord, testimony will be birthed in the mouth of your people and of your church. I will, we will declare the whole counsel of God from there after. Lord, salamat gid because everything is all found in you. And we give you glory and honor in this place. And all of God's people give the Lord a hand clap of praise, shouting Amen. Thank you, music team. You may take your seats. Good morning, church. For our giving this morning, let me encourage you in Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. And it says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The book of Haggai uh, tells us about the rebuilding of the temple. So God wanted the temple rebuilt, and he had the gold and the silver to do it. But he was looking for willing hands. God has chosen to do this through people in every generation. He provides the resources. But the question is, are we willing to do it? Are our hands willing to do it? Are we willing to give? And are we willing to go for God's work in the world? Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that everything comes from you. We are grateful that you have blessed us with resources, with wealth. You have blessed us with the capacity, the ability to produce wealth. But Lord, these are temporary. We are just managers. We are just stewards of this wealth, of these resources. So Father, it's just rightful to give it back to you. So Lord, bless the tithe that belongs to you. Bless the gifts, the, the, the offering. Lord, that we give, that we will give this morning. Bless the hearts of the giver. Touch them, Father, that they will, they will give willingly, unconditionally, and freely from the heart. Because, Lord, you deserve everything. Because none of this belongs to us. You're worthy of all our worship, of all our praises, of all our adoration. We want to glorify you all throughout this worship. We want to bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may drop your envelopes at the drop box near the exit after the service. And you, or you may visit this uh, link flashed on the screen if you want to give online. Make sure you have a data if you want to access this link. And also, we would like to request, do not fold the envelopes when you drop it to drop box. Okay? Thank you. God bless everyone and enjoy the rest of the service. God has the power to bring people from darkness to light, giving unquenchable hope and a strong sense of purpose to those who put their faith in Him. Here's a story of how God has instantly moved in miracles as we advance His kingdom together in Macau. Hi, my name is Fosti. I am one of the pastors here in Macau, uh, leading our church here in Taipa, called City Light, where we have our Chinese service. The past three years, it has been very challenging for everyone here because of that economic crisis. 
So most of the locals here, they would, you know, get their part-time jobs. And when the pandemic hit this city, there are a lot of mental health issues that, you know, made them feel depressed or anxious in life. It would really take time to build relationship and to gain their trust. Because of that, what we did was we worked with the University of Macau, we became the volunteers in one of their activities to facilitate so that they can even more practice their English. And at the same time, we were really able to dig into their hearts. And there's this open door for us to share the gospel to them. Through that, we met some students, really building relationship with them. And one of which actually that we were able to share the gospel is Ken. And at that time, he really wants to know his purpose in life. And so we started building relationship and discipling him. I'm Ken, I'm local from Macau, and now I'm serving in City Light Church as a translator and also a ministry intern. At the last year of my university life, I lost my purpose, lost my future direction, and I don't know what to do. Through my college teacher, I met Pastor Fosti and I was able to open up some of my challenges like family issue, relationship things, and Pastor Fosti continuously to disciple me. And through the process, I experienced God more and more. And he really revealed himself to me, showing that he has the power to change my life. And God helped me to be able to speak life to others now, to preach the gospel, to reach out to new people. And I believe the gospel can allow them to see their value and see their purpose in life. And I'm excited for the next generation here that they will also arise and have the heart to, to reach out to their own people. Please continue to pray with us that God would open the hearts of the people uh, for the gospel. We want to say thank you for continuously standing with us in prayers. Thank you for your generosity. Because of that, more people are coming to know who Jesus is. Guys, can you imagine the impact when God starts using local leaders like Ken to reach and disciple their own nations for the gospel? May God continue to fan and to flame our passion to bring the hope of the gospel across the nations. Thank you. Thank you so much for your faithful generosity. We are reaching and raising local leaders together. few important dates. The first one is our upcoming Victory Weekend on May 20. But uh, registration starts last Sunday and it will end on May 14. So please, to everyone who are done with one-to-one, -one, I hope now you could register for our Victory Weekend. In case you're wondering what Victory Weekend is a one-day retreat, and that is to set people free from their old life of, of sin and to start their new life in Christ. Also, for all Victory Group leaders with participants, on May 16 at 6 p.m. here in Mandoriao, we will have our orientation. Also, we want to highlight yesterday, we had our real-life family day, no? So 13 families from our real-life scholars, uh, we were able to have food, fun, and fellowship. And taking this opportunity to thank all our donors for real life, no? Abinaton, uh, scholars, scholars lang ni, but actually we are impacting families because of what real life has done for the local church. And we are just grateful to every donor every Victory Group leader who disciples children, every teacher who lead the way for these children to be connected to real life. Salamat, gid sa inyo kabuhi. And I really believe that you can never outgive God. He will just cause His goodness to overflow man sa inyo kabuhi. Victory decided a three-week series break. No? Basta series break, challenge na sa pastor kung ano i-preach. 
So we discussed and we felt like it's good to talk about families for the next three Sundays. The reason for that is also next week will be Mother's Day. And so for today, we will talk about the life of Abraham representing the fathers. And also on the third week after Mother's Day, we will talk about raising miss missional children. So we titled this series, As For Me In My House, which is basically a scripture that talks about, As For Me In My House, We Will Serve The Lord. And our goal here is that our families in church will pursue God-honoring relationships that is anchored on Jesus Christ and be able to lead our families in submission to His will, His purpose, and His mission, not just for each and every one of us, but also in the context of our families. So today, we will talk about Abraham representing the fathers, Uh, not just the fathers, but even the males, the husbands, the young men and women. So can you tap if there's a male beside you? Please tell him, this message is for you. Uh, para may pressure gamay. Uh, we'll be reading Hebrews 11, verse 8 to 12, then 17 to 19. Can we all stand as we read the word of God? By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in tents from Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, verse 17, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the, promise, the promises was in the act of offering up his only son. When it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead, from which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. This is the word of the Lord. Join with me in a prayer. Lord, today we ask you, Holy Spirit, to be our teacher, to be our guide, to be the one, Lord, to show us truth in your word. And Lord, we pray for our men, we pray for our fathers, we pray for our husbands, We pray, Lord, that you will just cause them, Lord, to see their faith to arise as we look into the life of Abraham in this short message. Salamat, Lord, that men will rise up for such a time as this to embrace their calling and purpose. And therefore, Lord, we will see our society change because our men embrace their calling from you. Salamat, good Lord, for the freedom that you will grant to all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. You may take your seats. If you talk about a father figure, or even a male, or a male leader, one of them that would stand out is really Abraham. In fact, growing up, we always sing the song, Father Abraham. No? Uh, And this is so important because even the three major religions of the world, talking about Christianity, Judaism, and even Islam, all point to Abraham as their spiritual father. That's how influential Abraham is. And so, 
One of the highlights in the life of Abraham is found in Genesis 15 verse 6 when the Bible says, And he believed in the Lord and he accounted it to him for righteousness. And then as we look at Hebrews, we realize how he believed in the Lord. Because when Abraham heard from God, he was already 75 years old. Sino diri, you're already 75. Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but you see, even if you are a senior citizen, even if you are already, or already past the age or in the age of retirement, there is no stopping what God can do in you and through you. In fact, I declare to the mature people in this building that your latter days will be greater than your former days. And just because the society tells you that you need to retire, you need to slow down, you need to depend on your children, I declare that God is going to use you in a mighty way to influence the next generation and the generations to come. Kung baga, kung ma-pray ma lang kita nga, i-heal ka ni Lord, di definitely, kung i-heal ka ni Lord, gamiton ka ni Lord. Hindi nga i-heal ka ni Lord, tapos mapungko ka lang. I-heal ka ni Lord for His glory. So Abraham was 75 years old, but he had to wait for another 25 years to see the fulfillment of the promise through a son called Isaac. And one of the character of Abraham that really stood out is, as we saw in the text, is his life of faith. And the problem with life of faith is because you don't get the full details of what God wants you to do and where He is taking you. The promise was found in Genesis and get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And your name will be great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. This is all what God told Abraham for the first time. So put yourselves in Abraham's shoes and God tells you, get out. Lord, di kumakad to. Di ni ang iya padulungan. There is no instruction. And I believe the writer of Hebrews designed it that way because the, the letter to the Hebrews was basically in intended for an audience of Jews. And the Jews, we all know them. They are so legalistic when it comes to compliance of laws. They are so legalistic when it comes to their lineage of uh, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No? And they are so focused on good works. And so the writer of Hebrews is telling its readers that the way to approach God is always by faith. It is by faith, one step at a time. He is not telling Abraham where to go. He just tells him to leave his country and his household. Everything is by faith. You know, the irony of the Christian life is this. We were saved by faith, but we want to live by sight. So it doesn't work that way. No? You can't say, ah, I am saved by faith. No? But this time, kay ari ko di sa earth, I will live by sight. Yes, you can work, you can produce, you can save, you can invest. But at the end of the day, we don't put our faith on what we have. We put our faith on our promise keeper and the one who provides for us. We are saved by faith and we continue to live by faith. Abraham didn't know where he was going, and so he lived by faith. Now, the reason why I believe God told Abraham only one 
instruction and then said nothing else is because God wanted for Abraham to develop his character. God was not just trying to take Abraham somewhere or maybe to the promised land. He was trying to make Abraham into someone. And for God to make Abraham trust him, put his confidence in him, follow him and obey him and worship him, he had to develop his character. Church, life will always be filled with questions. And you will always not find answers. And it may look like God is always silent. And all you have is his word. But the point of life is not you coming from point A to point B. The point of life is God is molding you. He is the potter and you are the clay. And God is trying to form Christ's likeness in the context of the New Testament. Christ's likeness in your life so that he can use you for his glory. He didn't know where he was going. He just obeyed God. He had to leave his country. He had to leave his household. God is calling us the same. God tells every believer a clean break from your past. Men, husbands, fathers, young men, we need to walk away from our past and do not look back. We need to go out and get out into that life of sin and live out our new life in Christ to fulfill His purpose for His glory. Jesus said, For any man who was, wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. To the extent that we live our old life, determines how much we will enjoy, how much we will experience the goodness of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the favor of the Lord in our new life. Bayaan mo gito ya ang sang una, kalimtan mo gito ya sang una, sang nagtabok ka na sa taytay, kilanlan sunugon mo ginang taytay para wala ka na balikan. The problem with men today is we always want to play it safe. Haven't you noticed ang mga men subong, hindi ka ba mga luyag? <laughs> Playing safe na actually, kay hindi sila gusto i-reject, gusto nila pirmi, they will be liked by women, so play safe. Kay hindi sila gusto sang responsibility. Now, I'm not talking to the men here, I'm talking to the men sang 9 a.m. ha? <laughs> Oo. 9 a.m. nga men, kamuya, grabe, kamuya ka confident in the Lord. No. So, lain kamuya nga breed of men. No. But you see, this is what Abraham's life is all about. He was a male, a man, just like all of us, just like some of us. And But because of his faith in God, he decided to step out in faith. Fear of the unknown is the most common fear of men. No? Kaya ang, ang hiligay nun, ang ilonggo ko nung men, sigurista. Ang bot kong tuod na. Oh, sigurista, ina ba lang gusto niya makita anay result before siya mag-step out in faith. No? Gusto niya anay nga mahint si woman, nga crush niya, para before siya mag-lay down. No? Gapanigurado, bala di siya gusto sang rejection, di siya gusto nga mag-fail in life. But here Abraham had to deal with the fear of the unknown. He had to face his fear. And the only way for him to face the fear was to focus his eyes on the God who builds up his faith. And just like Abraham, seeing all the things that came to pass in his life because of his faith in God. The same way with all the men today, all husbands, all fathers, all that God has for you is in the other side of your fears. And you will never see all those things, all the promises, all the anointing, 
all the gifting that God has for you if you decide to live in fear and just play it safe. If there's a male beside you, tap him and tell him, we are counting on you. No, para may pressure pagid. No, we are counting on you. No, you will only enjoy your new life in Christ to the extent that you leave your old one. So, gin give up, gin repent na to ang old nga kabuhi. Hindi tana na to pagbalikan. Because what God has in store for you, if you just focus on your new life. You will have more space and more time and more experience to see the hand of God. So Abraham was that. He didn't know where he was going. He knew only that the one who gave the promise can be trusted. Not knowing where you're going is better than going in the wrong direction. Not knowing where you're going, but because God told you so, is still better than knowing where you're going and going in the wrong direction. Because it is lived by faith. Because Abraham lived a life of surrender. Most men... Although for everyone niha, gina highlight ko lang ang men. Kiti wala nata Father's Day sa June six, June sixteen ginman or twelve. But most men, the reason why men can obey without surrendering. Ma obey lang kita, sigi obey. Pero we don't want to surrender to God, and there's a big difference. Why not surrender first? And then as you obey, you will see that it, it is indeed what God has in store for that person. God knows better and that is why we trust Him. Abraham didn't know where God is leading him, but he trusted because of the one who gave the promise. So here, going back to our text in Hebrews 11, we will see four things that we can learn from Abraham's faith in God. And I hope all of us, especially the males, would see this as a turning point in our life and we will start to live and act in accordance to the faith that God provides for His people. So the first one, through faith, he lived by a promise. And that was the only promise that God revealed to him. Hebrews 11 verse 9, By faith he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. One pastor said, Great lives are always trained by great promises. And this is what Abraham was all about. No? Ano ning promise ni Lord kay Abraham? It says in Genesis 12 verse 2, And I will make you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So in the scripture, four times, God declares a blessing. I will, I will, I will, I will. Abraham, for him to see this coming to pass, he had to listen. He probably took notes. But everything, every effort, every performance, it is all on the basis of God. So, this is not what Abraham did to God. This is always about what God did to Abraham. For the promise to come to pass, it was not dependent on Abraham. It was all dependent upon God. Essentially, he promises 
what he'll do for him, I'll make you into a great nation. What he'll do in him, I will bless you. What will God do through him in you, all the nations of the world and of the earth will be blessed. So, ang enablement, halintanan kay Lord. All Abraham had to do was to listen, listen to the instruction, and obey those instructions. I'm highlighting this because oftentimes it's all about what I can do for God. A pastor hindi lang kanya mag-serve kay gusto ko kung mag-serve ako, it's the best what I can do for God. No, uh, Pastor, ano man lang ko, I'm just a human being, I'm limited, I'm a sinner. If ever I can do something for God, it would not be enough. No, We always look at for the greater things. But here Abraham had to do little steps of faith. And the rest, it's all up to God. The divine enablement is all about God. The reason why we love Him is because He first loved us. We cannot love God or even serve God if He did not initiate in the first place. We can only do the works of, of God if He gives us the energy and the passion and the power to do it. So I, even the most weakest person, weakest male, wala tinapusan, can be used by God. And so, for Abraham, it did not make sense. I'm 75. By the time nga uh, eventually nagkabata si Abraham was 100. Guess ano ang common sa kay Abraham kag sa baby Isaac at uh, Jacob. They were both wearing diapers. Adult diaper kay Abraham, baby diaper kay Job, uh, kay Isaac, no? Because he was already old, no? He had no kids. His wife is barren. And then you're telling me you will make me into a great nation? Fast forward. If you count all the Jewish people, including all the Arab population on the earth, billions. That's why when God told Abraham, look at the stars in the heaven and see if you can count them. In the scripture we read, just begin to look at this, the, 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 the sands in the seashore. And that's how many your descendants will be. So, for Abraham, it did not make sense. For us today, it only made one. That the God who promised Abraham was faithful. In fact, if you talk about intermarriage, it's almost if not all the populations of the world. I also want to highlight the little acts of faith can have a great influence, not just today, but in the future. So, sa time ni Abraham, that was just a little act of faith. No? Tiambal ni Lord, you leave your country, tinaglalakat man siya. Maybe for him, it, it, will, it, it will not impact the future generations. But God was already, already preparing it for the future. And here we are today, looking back at this story, we realize, Lord, salamat gid, kay si Abraham nag -obey. It impacts me today, and the same story that I share to people would impact them also in the future. Through faith, he lived with a promise. Men, husbands, fathers. The only way that your faith will be strengthened is when you, re when you know and when you understand 
and when you hold on to the promise of God found in His Word. Kung puro negative ang mabatian mo, kung puro negative ang ginatanaw mo, ginabasa mo, then that fear would begin to overcome the faith that we have in our hearts. No? So that is why we need to look at the promises of God and hold on to that promise in order that there is a byproduct, there is a raw material that can work out and build up our faith. Through faith, he lived by the promise of God. The second, through faith, he lived by patience. Sino dere kon traffic, why kaya problema with patience? Especially kon dito ko gapuli dampi sa pabiya. So Abraham, he received a promise when he was 75. And then he had to wait another 25 years to see this promise come, come to pass. Now, why would God do that? Why not the next year? Why not two years after? Why wait another 75 years? Because I believe it was not just about Abraham. It was also because of the household. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive even when she was past the age since she considered him faithful who had promise. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. So, for Abraham to see that promise come to pass, he could not even reflect on it. It was just impossible. So God said to Abraham, let's go out. Let's look at the stars. Mas stargazing kita. Can you count the stars? Or let's look at the seashore. Can you count the sands? And true enough, even in our own generation today, we see that God is faithful. Not just to Abraham, but to his word. Abraham, his, the meaning of his name means exalted father. So you could just imagine Abraham from 75 to 125 years, your neighbors are calling you exalted father. It was kind of embarrassing but when the divine appointment came, Sarah had to bear the son, Isaac. This promise was despite of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar committing sin. So, ginpangunahan nila si Lord, din sila kahulat, Abraham slept with Hagar and that is where the son Ishmael was birthed. But still, God was faithful to his promise. Eventually, Isaac was birthed. Man, I know na damo kita failures in the past and ginakahuya, gina naton. In fact, we don't want even to talk about it because it brings shame and condemnation. Fathers, I know na oftentimes you are not a good provider to your family. Men, husbands, sometimes we are not good husbands to our wives. But it does not change the fact that God, our God is faithful. And if we surrender our lives to Him, He will continually mold us and use us. He will develop our faith. He will develop our character. He will broaden our shoulders so that we can be men who will embrace His calling in our generation. Don't let the past determine your actions today and your direction for the future. Because it's all about the faithfulness of the one who gives the promise. So 
So Abraham, he lived by the promise of God. The second one, Abraham, through faith, he lived by patience, waiting for the promise of God to come to pass. And then the third one, through faith, he lived with persistence. No? Verse 10, it says here, For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. So si Abraham, nakita yaman ang yes circumstance today, impossible to bear a child, difficult, challenging, and impossible. But the way to overcome that limitation was not just to focus on the now, he had to look for the future. He realized that the fulfillment of the promise is beyond his age and his lifetime. So he looking forward, he fixed his eyes on the promise-keeping God. And that is why the scripture is saying, has foundations whose designer and builder is God. So grabe ang iya unwavering conviction of the goodness and the one who gave the promise. Maybe Abraham was not that faithful. Maybe Abraham, or indeed he failed because he took matters into his own hands. Maybe he questioned God, but he realized the goodness of the one who made the promise. Grabe iya conviction, he is always faithful. And that is why in verse 14, for people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would, would have opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God for He has prepared for them a city. So, Si Abraham, although he was promised land, as we read the text, he moved around. He pitched a tent. He removed his tent. He went around. He, he, he wandered along the Euphrates River. He wandered along the wilderness, out in the open, waiting and waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. Lord, I be may promise nga land. Wala man how. But he was persistent. He fixed his eyes on his God. In fact, all the land that Abraham had, ang ilang nalulugman, ang ilang cemetery ni Sarah, that's all the land that they had. But what the Bible is telling us in our context, and in the context of divine sovereign will of God for Abraham, it was looking towards a heavenly one. It was looking towards a heaven that is called a heavenly city, a heavenly kingdom where God has prepared the ultimate reward for his faith. May makanta pa tani. Huh? Sometimes we believe the idea na Everything that we have is all found here on this earth. Now all that you can do and all that you can expect, it's all here on this earth. But the reality is, yes, God would provide and give us things beyond our capacity to imagine in this life. But I believe there are greater things in the other life. We think that the real world is this earth when in reality the real world is spiritual. In fact, the real world, the spiritual world, the heavenly beings, we are awaiting to see them. And they are already in existence. So, there are focus si Abraham. I remember Paul, he said in Acts 2, 
I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish the task, the task of testifying the, the gospel of grace. And then he continues on to say, for I am looking forward for the prize. For I'm looking forward for the crown of righteousness. Abraham lived with persistence. Pangabay lang ko sa mga men, sa mga husbands, sa mga fathers, sa mga young men. Don't give up on life. Stay strong in the Lord. Life is difficult and challenging. In fact, God tests Abraham and you will be tested. It will be difficult. It was a curse from the land. We will sweat our bloods. We will face problems after problems. We will always be uh, uh, facing all of these challenges, not just in marriage, but even with our children, with our city, with our nation, with the economy. All of these challenges are around us. But please don't give up. Don't quit. Don't surrender. But if you surrender, surrender only to the Lord. Be persistent. Be consistent. Move one step at a time by faith. Because the one who made the promise will never leave us, will never forsake us. And lastly, through faith, Abraham lived in God's power. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, Men, we will always be tested. From one test, we will face another test. In fact, there will be times now multiple tests. When he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promise was in the act of offering up his only son. In fact, with all the challenges that we face, this one is beyond imagination and God told him go to Mount Moriah and bring your son and plunge a knife over his body and offer him to me can you imagine that kind of test by the way the devil will always tempt God will always test there's a big difference Satan will tempt you to bring out the worst in you. See, God will test us to bring out the best in us. So here, while waiting for the next day, Abraham now is trying to put balance to the instruction. If I kill my son, then all the promises forget about it. Because Isaac is the son of the promise. He will eventually represent future salvation, messianic hope. He will be the reason why all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And now, Lord, you are telling me to kill him and to offer him. Men, fathers, husbands. When there is something strange happening to you, it's always good to run to God and consult Him. It's always good to pray. Mga men subong addicted sa basketball pero hindi addicted sa Holy Spirit. And that is why pag may test, pag may challenge, isolate da yun. And so Abraham, despite the test, he had to reflect. He had to remind himself, Ad, promise mo ni Lord. And I know you are true to your promise. That is why he reminded, Through Isaac, Lord, your offspring be named and all the nations of the world be blessed. And then through that promise, it dawned on him, and we see this in verse 19, he considered that God was able. 
men, husbands, fathers, we will not be always able. We will always be limited. Our wife's expectation, we can never meet it. Our children's expectation, we cannot always be there. But our God is able. And He will enable you to become the best father. He will anoint you to become the best husband. He will anoint you by your Holy Spirit so that you can lead your children. So Abraham realized, Sige Lord, I will plunge a knife into my son tomorrow because actually, you are able to raise him from the dead. And even if you do not stop me, ang imo promise mapadayon kag ma-fulfill git. So dua lang ang conclusion, it's either God is erratic or cannot be trusted or either God is faithful and sovereign and he can always be trusted. He lived by God's power. He believed by, in God's power. And indeed, God was able. He provided a sacrifice, animal sacrifice, instead of Isaac. Men, husbands, fathers, what fear is before your eyes right now? What is stopping you from living out what God has in store for you and for your family? What are you struggling over in life that God is not able to reverse, that God is not able to break forth, that God is not able to anoint you and believe for the impossible? Husbands, men, fathers, look at me. Wala sang laki nga nagaduko. Tulukan nyo ko for a minute. Will how you live and how you give and how you obey teach your wife and children to trust God? Because faith is best caught than taught. Gakasubogin ko na bala sometimes nga may mapalapit diri. Ah, pastor, basi pwede ning bata ko sa campus. May ara ka da pwede mapaka-disciple siya. Okay, manahin mo on, manah namon. But please, it is your life that builds your children's faith. It is your example. It is your giving. It is your generosity. It is your obedience. It is your life of worship. It is your life of intercession. It is your life of when challenges are right before you and how you respond that builds the faith of your children. How you live, how you give, and how you obey. It will have more impact in your children even when you are no longer here. Because if you don't live that life and they don't see it and all they have is a tablet and a cell phone, what can you expect for their future? Tap the mail beside you. We are counting on you. Para may pressure pagid. Seryoso niya, hindi niya lang ulango. I, I really believe the future of this nation, yes, it's found in our youth. It's also found in our homes. The future of this nation is not in Malacanang. Believe me. Mapachanay ka mo di tanan sa politics. Intrahan lang kita sa demonyo, kalipay lang may linaway kita. But at the end of the day, it's the fathers who are leading their families in the home that will change this nation. And so, Abraham lived in the promise of God. Men, fathers, husbands, 
What promise of God are you holding on to? For you, for your family, for your wife, for your children, for our city, for our nation. He lived through patience. Men, it will not be instant. For God to mold us and make us leaders that we are designed to be, it will take time. It will take pruning. It will take difficulty and tests. Be patient. Through faith, he live in persistence. Bisa na tumba ka, bisa na huyaan ka, bisa nag-fail ka sa life, you must continue to push on, to, to go forward, to fix your eyes on Jesus, to hold on to His promises. You need to be persistent in your prayers, persistent in your worship, persistent in discipling your children, persistent in our spreading of the gospel. And finally, there's only one, one power that we need to hang on to and we need to put our trust on, and that is Abraham by faith, he lived in God's power. I don't know your past. I don't know what challenges you are facing. I don't know what difficulty you are in. But yes, our God is able. He is always able. And he is a father who is good to his people, to his children. And he will make sure his promises will come to pass. Let's all stand. Can I ask all the males to just raise their hands? And then the rest of the women and the children, you may extend your hand to them as we dedicate them to the Lord. Lord, we commit this man to you. Salamat, Lord, kiginhatag mo sila sa amon. And I know, Lord, the feeling of inadequacy is real. And yes, Lord, just like Abraham, there are times they failed. They were not a good father. They were not a good husband. They were not a good dad. But Lord, even sa kay Abraham, that was part of the process. So Lord, today, I speak, Lord, your blessing upon these men, husbands and fathers. I declare, Lord, your Holy Spirit to come upon them and live inside of them. Lord, I pray, Lord, that there is no spirit of fear, but a spirit of faith to arise. Lord, I pray, that they will be bold in your word, in your purpose and will for them. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will revive, Lord, ang ila calling, ang ila, Lord, purpose sa imong kingdom, kag sa ila families. Lord, I declare their latter days are greater than their former days. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will broaden their shoulders. You will give them wisdom like that of Solomon. You will anoint their lips, Father God, just like the boldness of Paul. I pray, Lord, even right now, that you will give them supernatural strength, supernatural grace to finish strong in their life. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will stand up for righteousness. They will stand up, Lord, for your Bible. They will stand up, Lord, for the truth. They will not comprom compromise. They will not give in. Lord, I pray that they will be men, Father God, who will always walk in integrity. Salamat, Ginoo, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. I cancel, Lord, the lies of the enemy. I cancel, Lord, the arrows of the evil one who's trying to kill, steal, and destroy their destiny. But Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will walk in the fullness of your blessing, in the fullness of the power of your Holy Spirit, so that, Lord, they will be world changers. They will influence, Lord, their family, their neighborhoods, their office mates, their, their classmates, Lord. I pray even right now, Lord, that you revive them, Lord, to their calling by being men and women of the gospel, Lord. They will advance your kingdom by the power and the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we declare them blessed. 
we declare them, Lord, at the center of your will. And Lord, we come against timidity. We come against, Lord, being passive. But Lord, help them, Lord, to step out in faith, knowing, Lord, that you are with them. We declare the spirit of Abraham upon them even right now, so that, Lord, all glory and honor will belong to you when we see all of the promises coming to pass in our lifetime and in the generations of our children and our children's children. Salamat, good Lord, sa sininga mga lalaki, Lord. We dedicate them to you and we pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will just be upon them to give them favor and righteousness and protection and anointing so that, Lord, they can fulfill their purpose in their lifetime. And all of us say, Amen. Amen. Can you raise your hand as we close with a benediction? Now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make His face to shine upon you. And may the Lord be gracious unto you and give you supernatural peace right now and forevermore. And all of God's people shout a big, big. Thank you. Continue to honor God. Make disciples. God bless your week.